So let's talk for a second. Um, I found it interesting as we've been reading about some of the amazing things that you're doing and trying to move the industry forward and, and actually take like a real hard look at how things are changing. You do have a unique perspective coming from the media side and now being in the position that you're in. So we're here at this conference, all of us are, a conference called Videonomics. And when I was first uh, asked to co-host this, I just by the title alone, uh, thought this is an amazing time to be thinking about a subject like this. Um, we all talk about it, TV, video, how do you use it effectively and all that, but actually the business models are changing. And you're in a unique position to try to figure out how to move your business forward yeah. while this industry is shifting. Mm -hmm. So how do you think about videonomics? Um, well, thank you all for having me here. I'm very excited. Um, I love the word video. Um, because it's finally uh, taking this entire industry into a holistic place. Um, when I was on the agency side, it was always TV buying and digital buying, and I think now we are all um, looking at this entire landscape as one holistic, multi-platform landscape, and I think the word video gets us there. You know, we talked about it. I'm still upset that people still say digital and linear, mm -hmm. and I think that's just a behavioral change that we're going to have to you know, deal with over the next uh, year or so, but I think video is getting us at that place. Yeah, and what about the economics, the, the business models that are shifting? Yeah, I mean, I've, um, I've been at Turner, um, it's just gonna be about four years, so, um, and I will tell you the business has not been the same since the day I walked in the door. Uh, David Levy, when he hired me, didn't tell me that this was going to happen. The good news um, is the agency side has stayed. I know. Well, side. I'm looking at the agency side and saying, <laughs> I'm glad I'm on this side right now, knowing what's going on over there. But um, you know what? It's a really exciting time. I am just so excited. It's not easy. Okay, we all know that this is not easy, but we are in a huge transformation that we can all help get it and change it and evolve it. And that's what I'm all excited about. So what we've been doing and focusing a lot on is where do we want this business to go? What can we do for our clients, whether it's agency and or direct clients? And how can we help become that resource now? I think old media companies were always looked as just a vendor. And now we need to become the partner to help you, we need to be the right hand and the left hand coming together. And that's what we've been focusing on a lot more of, is how do we become that strategic resource for our clients in the future? And so we talked a little bit about this and I think we should dive in. I think you know companies like Facebook and Twitter have made some pretty significant advancements. Um, one would argue with the agencies, around the agencies, um, you could I'm going to move back so you guys can yeah, right, yeah. see Donna. <laughs> um, Better look at than me. And uh, how, how do you think about sort of the role of Turner and, you know, what is your sort of push in that area? Yeah, I mean, we've been focusing. Listen, Turner has, has always been and will always be a content company. We are good at it. We have six, seven really strong brands. Content is king. And what I'm excited about, it still is, right? I mean, Netflix, yes, friend or foe has obviously elevated content into our space, which is great. Um, what we now have to focus on, and this is what Facebook and Twitter and Google have obviously brought to the party, is the data part, which we never had to really do, right? Um, that just wasn't something that we needed to focus on at that time, it wasn't part of what was going on in the industry. We are now taking a really hard look over the past two or three years, really diving into now what and who our audiences are, whether it's on digital, linear, all the platforms. That will be the holy grail. The media company that has the best content with all the data behind it is gonna be able to drive this industry and help push it to where it needs to be. Yeah, and we know Michael's gonna come up next and share some of the strategies yeah. on um, how you're doing that. Mm -hmm. um, You've made some uh, bold moves already, and there's more to come, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about uh, your view on kind of the thinking about day part differently. Yeah, so um, last year at CES was really our, was our foray and really starting to talk a lot more one-on-one -on -one with clients. Um, because I'll be honest, Turner alone can't do this. Um, and it's not just a media agent, a media company's issue, it's all of ours, whether it's agency, client. So 
again, because I have a little bit of insight, because 27 years on agency, I thought that we needed to kind of open the kimono a little bit and show clients what we were doing, mm -hmm. okay? Because what I don't want to happen, and we've talked about this, is it can't be the shiny new object of what's happening today. There's huge investment on all media companies that has to go into what we have to do to get our inventory and our back end into this space mm -hmm. in audience on linear. So we really started just talking about what, do it, what does it mean to do audience-based buying in the linear space. Um, and that does not mean we're not focusing on digital. I don't want anybody to think that. We are a multi-channel, multi-platform company. But linear has a lot of history that needs to be rejiggered. And clients and agencies have to understand what that <laughs> dynamic means. So we talked about there are no day parts, okay? Or your old adult 18 to 49 CPM is not what the success metric needs to be moving forward. And do you understand what that means? I got a lot of nods, head shaking, yes, 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 but then, you know, put your money where your mouth is, who's really gonna play? So that was the push that we did last year. I went on stage during the upfront, talked about it a lot, kind of put a little bit of a, you know, uh, gauntlet down and saying, all right, guys, who's coming? Right? You're talking about you wanting it on audience linearly, but like, do you really know what it means? We now have four um, clients that are testing with us, um, General Motors, Kellogg's, two others that I, that I can't mention, but we need to start testing the model, okay? I don't have all the answers. I don't think any of us have all the answers, but if we don't start testing to see what audience selling and buying look like across my portfolio, we're never gonna get there. So in other words, instead of uh, day part buying or even show buying, it's yep. audience buying. Correct. Yeah. And it's your individual audiences. Right. I don't want to have one set audience that I'm going to shove down each client's throat. Your audience is going to be very different than Proctor's audience, which is very different than Nat Den and Yogurt. Right. I want to be able to partner with all of the audiences and see. We talked about this too. Maybe I don't do well with that in yogurt. Maybe that's not, I may not accept those advertisers because that's not the audience that is purchasing those products. Mm -hmm. That's a big, that's a big statement. Yeah. You know, I, telling David Levy that I'm turning away money is not really what he hired me to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if that's what it's going to be, then we have to lean towards the purchase peep, the cycle of who is buying the products for you. Right. And I'm hoping that that's Turner for you. Well, and you know, yesterday we heard Irwin talk about, um, uh, he was asked about programmatic. Mm -hmm. And he- I hate that word. I do too. Hate it, I hate, hate it, it too. hate it. Well, because it means too many things. It's it like just, branding, It just means right? cheap, 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 cheap. And that's not what it's gonna be. Right. It just means getting to that right audience. Well, and interestingly, he, he quoted Marissa Meyer and said that it was, um, the, you know, programmatic is the opposite of um, manual. Right? Correct. Which, depending on how you think about it, what you're talking about in terms of audience-based buying, I think is actually the magic. Programmatic shouldn't be about automation, mm. or if, if it is, we should bucket it that way. But audience-based buying is, it gets really interesting. So how are you looking at inventory yeah. in order to do that, and how do you sort of manage? Yeah, it, this, is, this is hard. Um, you know, we collectively have to make a decision over the years of what percentage of our inventory is gonna go into this type of yeah. um, bucket, right? right? And yeah. I'll be honest, we don't know yet how many clients are gonna raise their hand and wanna purchase it that way. You know, there are gonna be clients that still are gonna wanna do, obviously, big, content marketing ideas and ideation mm -hmm. um, with NCAA, Live Nation, you know, Rick and Morty Premier. I mean, there's so many things that they're still gonna wanna do. So we're gonna have to figure out what the model looks like and how to bucket and price inventory according to the needs of what clients want. So I'm not really gonna know that until we start getting into that space. Right. And one year may look different mm -hmm. than the next year. Right, and then if you put programmatic in, because when I used to work on Procter and Gamble, we used to call it foundation impressions, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And you had a certain percentage, right, Adam? This is what we did: <laughs> um, certain percentage of, of foundation impressions, and then you made a decision on what percentage that you wanted to be, you know, much more high-end content touch points. And every category and every client is going to have a different mm -hmm. model. Studio is very different 
than packaged goods, which is di very different than automotive. Mm -hmm. And we're not gonna know that until we start getting into this space on where each client needs to be. Yeah. So, and I gotta tell you, right now it's all manual. I right. don't have the infrastructure today, I'm honest, which is why this year we said we can't do it with everyone. But if I can start showing results and try learn, we're gonna learn from, from some failures. I, I don't know what it's gonna show. Mm -hmm. I don't, right? And it may do really well on GM and it may not do as well on Kellogg's or is, vice versa. What does doing well mean? Because there's been talk about audience guarantees and you know. We're gonna do a double guarantee. So right now, again, because um, it's an uncomfortable feeling to get rid of our adults 18 to 49 traditional CPM or 2554, right? It just, it's uncomfortable. So we are looking at whatever client's audience they're telling us to be. We're using their audience uh, targets. We will rerun what they've purchased with us historically and look at that by, just like they did this year or last year, on their new target. Mm. It's not gonna look so good, mm -hmm. okay? Because they didn't buy it that way or that wasn't the goal. But we need to have a starting point. And Santosh is in the room at A&E and now I know he's in this new role. He's gonna write all this down. <laughs> my competitor. Um, Put the pen down. That's okay, we gotta do this together. Yeah. We've well, talked about this. It yeah. can't just be Turner doing this. Right. We all have to do this together. Yep. But then we have to go into the next book and say, okay, if we were going to buy on this audience that you are looking for, how would we now buy Turner right. across the portfolio? Because that's not how we were purchased. We were purchased TBS, TNT, yep. Adult Swim, depending on what the target audience is. Now it's look at the entire inventory management across the board, hold into that audience, and now what's that buy look like? Mm -hmm. That audience target now is gonna look a lot better. Mm -hmm but the traditional historical CPM is gonna look like shit. Right. Okay. Is that a technical term? Shit. Yeah. yeah. Crap. Just checking. Just okay. But I bet you I'm gonna get pushed that that old CPM is gonna be through the roof and we're gonna have this dynamic and saying, well, yeah, I want this, but I want this. And they want their cake and eat it too. And that's where the rub is gonna be over the next six months to a year is that we have to get out of our historical look and figure out that this is now a comfortable space. Yeah. And how do we know, you know, because it gets now to targeted CPM, right, and reaching right. your audience, but how do you know you're reaching that audience? You're gonna have your data, right, and I think it's, uh, you know, it's not a throwaway thought of like, hey, there's someone from another network here. This has to shift in the industry. Yes. Because as a client and mm -hmm. uh, on the agency side, we can't be kind of taking everybody's different analysis and, um, you know, there's players like Nielsen trying to make shifts here. There's other uh, opportunities for um, targeting attribution models, looking at the target audience. But yeah. you know your audience in some ways um, much better than an industry oversight, you know, company will do so. We have to figure out the standardization. I, I don't know that part. I mean, that's what we're used to. That's why we keep going back to his history because right. at least Nielsen is. Everybody it's has it, right? It's, it's a, it's a yeah. standard. So we're gonna have to figure out that standard. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to go down this path to try to test the model. Linda's going down her path. ABC and Adam are doing their thing. Viacom's doing their thing. It's not gonna work yep. if we all don't figure out what it all looks like. So I think right now, testing in all the different media companies is not a bad thing, right? okay? Because we don't have all the answers. But then it's gonna come to that crescendo where, okay, what is Turner doing? What is NBCU doing? What is ABC doing? And where's the commonalities that you all are happy with and how do we bring it all together? The CAB is now the VAB, which I think is really great. So now it's not just a cable industry, it's a whole broadcast industry that now is coming together. I think that's at least the beginning where we can come together and start doing it. What I like about it is that, and there's no, we talked about there's no Nielsen people here. Um, I don't want Nielsen to be our success metric anymore. It can't be, okay? It just can't. Those ratings are never gonna be what they used to be. There's just too much content out there. But that doesn't mean that the programming that's on is not good. It doesn't mean the content that is around does not sell product. 
like the scale never changed. The scale right? never like changed. Scale, we have yeah. to figure out what the new success metric is. Yeah. Kevin Riley is going to be really happy when I say to him, don't worry about a one, a two, or three. Okay? If I can prove and say to you that it's selling your product, right. that's great. Not just Turner alone. We talked about that. It's going to be Turner plus this one plus digital plus add a home. I mean, it's a whole, a whole campaign that has to happen. Yeah. Well, but it's not tied to, oh, it didn't do a great rating and it's live plus three and it's seven and it's this and it's like, that's, that's gotta go. Yeah. Well, and certainly in the space, we've seen sort of trends toward sort of taking a more event type approach to programming. Right. Um, can you talk about some of the innovations that you have, have there? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's the other amazing thing about our business is that, you know, event live programming is just resonating. I mean, we see it in sports, we see it in award shows. I mean, that's what we're, you know, that's like, that's right now the holy grail because that's where the social conversation is. That's what clients are really trying to be tied to is being part of that social trendy conversation. So we are obviously, with Turner, are trying to find more and more of that type of programming. That's hard. There's just so many sporting events to do. We just yeah. talked about, we're starting our own league with eSports. Uh, which is that whole gaming phenomenon. We're putting a huge bet into it in 2016. Um, that could be, you know, the next hot trend. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a lot of those. Right. And part of it is, you know, from our side on the client side, and um, obviously we all have different target audiences and ways of looking at it, but there's talk of, you know, trying to find shows that are DVR proof. You know, so sports, by nature, yes. you're going to want to watch live. You're going to want to know what's going on, especially if you follow a team or you're into the sport. But it's it's beyond sports. It's something that you know. What's still amazing, and if you try and simplify this stuff, um, we have an audience that we want to try and reach. If they were all just walking into uh, a mini dealer, we we wouldn't need to to do much advertising, but we do, and we fight for uh, our share all the time. You have an audience. Right? And you have an audience because you create great content and great moments. Mm -hmm. And I think if we kind of look at it through the lens of moments, right? Yeah. As opposed to sports, sports is definitely a moment, but you're creating moments out there that hopefully people are gonna want to, to use an old term, tune into and spend time with and then hopefully talk about right. through social or you know whatever the version of the water cooler is. Um, but perhaps because of Netflix and some of these other ways of watching, right, there's different ways that people are gonna watch it, there's different times that people are gonna watch it, and then there's different ad placements, right? And so you've uh, just taken a big step yep. with announcing uh, Angie Tribeca. Do you wanna just talk mm -hmm. about the thinking that went into that and yeah. what you're trying to explore? Yeah, so strategically what we are doing now at Turner is we've, we're kind of, and John Martin actually had a huge global uh, town hall uh, last week, um, and it's actually been what sales has been focusing on, but everything that we're doing is we're basically turning the company upside down and zeroing in on putting the consumer at the center, which ironically is what clients have always done. <laughs> Media companies probably not so much, um, but literally thinking about that consumer and that viewer and how they experience our content. Mm -hmm. And we've all done a really shitty job of basically cluttering up the linear space with commercials, all obviously for financial reasons. Not like the good job display is done, not cluttering. No, not at all. Um, <laughs> but again, it just was a matter of of time, it started out one way, and then the ratings are going down, and it was all a financial model of what had to happen, and you know, clients didn't want to pay more, so we had to add more commercial. I mean, it, it, the whole thing, it was all of us intertwined, but now it's there, and we're living with it. And Netflix has just completely changed the behavior of, you know, my kids, 22, 18, they just, they don't watch, it kills me, because I'm mm -hmm. like, yes, you do, because I'm paying for your college, you better watch commercials. <laughs> um, but it's changed the behavior, and we need to learn from that. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at what Netflix has done, we're looking at what Hulu has done, and I, and I like Hulu's model, okay? We have to go back. We have to take everything that we've done and basically turn it upside down. So we are testing a lot of different models right now in the linear space of what the commercialization needs to look like now and in the future, okay? That is a huge change for us, one, financially, okay? 
basically taking a step back. Um, confidentially, the media companies cannot do this alone. We cannot take the entire burden from the financial hit, but we're testing models. So we announced um, last week in the Wall Street Journal that True TV is taking a huge step in fourth quarter 2016, and we're basically, with all their new original programming, we're gonna be going to an eight minute commercial load. It will be the lowest commercial load on television, broadcast, TV, and Hulu. And we're doing it for a reason. Now we had to wait until fourth quarter 2016 because we have to reformat all the new shows. Hmm. You can't go backwards and do it. You have to do it moving forward. So Chris Lynn now has to look at all the shows that are coming on and literally is saying to all the producers, we now need you know, 50 plus more minutes of programming because that's not how it's been produced. So uh, we're gonna open it up to questions in a minute. Uh, we're only gonna be able to take a few. She's, uh, she said shit twice. I bet you somebody can get an F-bomb if they ask the right question. Um, I'm allowed. So that's our challenge. No you're, right, you're allowed. Um, so really uh, think through some questions. I have, I have a question first that um, I think will be interesting for you. You've, you've also done a lot to give back to the industry and um, won an impact award uh, from Ani for your mentorship. Uh, work, which is great. And we're all trying to learn. We're all trying to figure out like what's next and what to do next. So you can keep your eyes open or closed, but uh, take yourself back. Assume like right now you're beginning in this business. Okay. And assume that uh, you're starting out and you're at Turner and 20 years from now, you will be the president of Turner ad sales. What do you wish Donna would do this year that would help you 20 years from now when you become president? Wow. <laughs> that was What's the move? What's the that move? That was not a pre-asked question. Things? Not a pre-asked question. <laughs> yeah. So the, the industry is the way it is today? Yeah. You are, you are where you are, and you're setting up somebody for 20 years from now when yep. they're going to have your seat. Yeah. Um, what has to happen is the silos need to be completely broken. Um, I don't think anybody getting into this business has to, has to stay in their linear paths of going down television, going down digital. Like that whole thing has to be one focus. Um, and I think we're even our talent today. We're finding that if you're you know you, you grew up one way, you grew up the other. And I've been trying to figure out how to marry the two. Mm -hmm. The industry has to just you have to come that way. The training has to start where it's just one holistic view and not look at it as silo. And we talked about it, digital, the nomenclature of digital needs to get out of what we talk about. Yeah. It just has to be content yep. on multi-platform, across a portfolio, where we will now figure out our messaging. And that's the key too. 30s, 15s, the nice. whole messaging has nice. to get turned upside down. Yep. We need to start doing better storytelling. We're not doing storytelling to help marry the content with the advertising and the messaging together. In whatever format it is. In whatever sense. format yeah. it is. Yep. Yeah. Great. Okay. So There's who's a got question a question that's going to stimulate an F-bomb? Donna? Bill McOwen, buyer. Um, ah. <laughs> just Bill a used to work for me. <laughs> this will be easy. So don't um, fuck me. <laughs> there you go. Right away. Just right. by... Yeah, Your um, study, which I think is great on the commercial load, but you and I actually touched, touched upon this slightly about a month back. Mm -hmm. It's the lost generation who, once they've lent themselves to the one-on-one -on -one experience of relating to program and its content, don't mind the commercial interruptions when they're aligned to who they are and they can relate to them on a storyline basis, that yeah. it speaks to them. I think the trouble with linear, and this is a slight editorial, is you know we sell to anyone who's willing to pay the price currently. That process going forward will be maintained in the VOD space, which is really the opportunity to, I think, advance our situation, because we've heard a lot over the last day or two about what we can do better, and that's as marketers. But really, it's relying upon an environment that is resonating with the consumer and or their audience. And just like to know your thoughts, I guess full circle here is, do you have any ideas about pairings of your programming with the advertisers of which they will um, associate? Yes, that? yes, yes. We, um, 
We are creating, um, we um, started a new content studio called Courageous that uh, we announced in May, which has a lot to do with, obviously, right now, CNN, great big story, because we're starting a new uh, video site. But what we're doing in that space, and we're doing it on entertainment, too, is we're cr trying to create, a lot of people are coming to us to help create native ads, mm -hmm. exactly what you're talking about. And this is where the commercial pods are, are really, in linear space, are, are going to be crucial, because we want to try, and this is harder in entertainment, because we want to try to marry some of the talent within our shows with the brands right. to kind of do better storytelling. And so, it doesn't feel like a break. And it doesn't feel right. like a break. Yeah. Okay, now from an entertainment perspective, that's a little bit more challenging because there's talent fees and all that. But if you can go to a B storyline or a C storyline and you don't maybe take the main character and we can figure that out, we can try to do that. So if our pods, okay, right now they're freaking four and five minutes, you want to kill yourself, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. If we can figure out what a two minute pod looks like and we create that storytelling in two minutes, then you come out of our content into a branded content, which is brand, but may, maybe the audience doesn't necessarily feel it, and then it goes right back in. Mm -hmm. So that is really hard to do, but that's where it needs to go. Right. We've created capabilities in-house because we're closer to the content, we're figuring out how to do production. We have clients now coming to us for production. Mm -hmm. I know this is challenging because it's kind of taking it out of the creative agency space, but it's kind of happening. Mm -hmm. But well, don't worry, we have so much room to play. I, I mean, no. <laughs> I, I know. Um, but that's where it's going, Bill. Um, but it's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis because it's going to be hard. We have to be able to scale it, right? Because that's the, that's the tough part because you can't create all these little mini right. commercials for one thing. For many. One, you from, right, you, you need many, which is why it needs to get cheaper. You know, it can't be million dollar campaigns. Right. You know, we can do it cheaper and you have to do many, many commercials. But I think that's where we all have to go. Mm -hmm. They're kind of doing it in digital, mm -hmm. but they're not applying it to linear. Right. So we kind of have to take what's happening in digital and applying it to linear. And that's, we, we're testing that model as we speak. Cool. I think we have time for one more. Yep, hello, Debriana Obara from Roxa. Um, where are you? Where are you? Over where here. Are you? Oh, oh. Stand up. <laughs> so I was curious about your predictions about this reduced commercial pod, more branded entertainment, and what would that be in terms of effects for your DRTV division, potential programmatic buying inventory? Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there'll be less inventory, no doubt. Um, this was, I, mean, I will tell you, this, is, this was a huge conversation within our company because literally by doing it, we are taking away inventory to sell. Mm -hmm. Okay, telling a company you know, who has stock that they have to worry about is not an easy thing. But I'll be honest, if we don't do it, mm -hmm. we will not be around, okay? It is just a horrible, horrible experience. It's not just Turner, guys. This is all of linear television right now. Our experience is terrible. And if we don't figure out how to change the model, we're all in trouble. So we're going to be able to, at some point, charge a premium for it. And I'm hoping to get back on track and not look at the reduction of the finance. Because if there's more programming and less commercialization, hopefully, automatically, naturally, it will raise my ratings. Right. Okay. Now, remember, we also said we may not want to be tied to ratings if we go to audience selling and buying. So I might not be tied to it, and I might be able to charge differently now that I'm selling on audience. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of trying to do both at the same time to figure out what the financial model is, but clients are gonna have to help fund some of this, mm -hmm. and we're gonna try to take it as well. So I think it's a 50-50 goal. In digital, unfortunately, you can add a lot of inventory. Linearly, I can't, that was the problem. I did add it, and this is the problem that we're in now, now I have to reduce it. But on the other platforms, you know, we have a lot that we can play with long-term to see if we can add inventory there. Yeah, but what's, what's cool, and we're gonna wrap up here, is that you're taking a brave step, um, which is actually, it's something that's happening. You're seeing it happening, we're all seeing it happening. You're taking a step to try and figure out 
what consumers are doing now watching, right? right? And they are doing this on Netflix or HBO or whatever it is, as well as watching regular TV and looking at video on digital, but the viewing habits are changing. And so how can you still connect with that audience and give advertisers value? Um, it's going to be a really interesting year ahead. It is. Um, listen, in our biggest, an you know, we're, listen, we're marketers too. We have to figure out how to market our shows. Yes. So we're in the same boat that all of you are in as well. I mean, we're, you know, we wear both hats. Yeah. Well, thank you very awesome. much, Donna. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. guys.